The Pixie transceiver is an appalling kit to use on the air. It's crystal controlled, meaning you can't dodge QRM or call stations on their frequency. It's low power, making it hard for people to find your signal amongst the noise. And its receiver front end is terrible, meaning that you'll often get overload from shortwave or local broadcast stations. Nevertheless, it's been a top seller, and given the low price, it's pretty good value, even if just for the parts. In this video, I'll describe things you can do to make the Pixie slightly less terrible. Buy some crystals from suppliers like Expanded Spectrum Systems. They sell crystals at quite low prices on popular QRP frequencies. Then add a switch so you can switch between two frequencies. That will help if there's interference on one frequency and you want to call on another quieter frequency. Remember, the less interference there is, the more likely your signal will be in the clear. And that's critically important for something with just a few hundred milliwatts. If you haven't already assembled your Pixie, don't solder in the crystal just yet. Instead, put in two circuit board pins. That will make it easier to do the modifications described in this video. Even if you don't have a second crystal, another thing you can do is add a variable capacitor in series with the crystal that you've got. In an experiment I did, I could get 3 kHz tuning range, which was quite useful compared with the no tuning range that you got before the variable capacitor was added. You'll get different results with different sized crystals. With an HC18 crystal like this, I get around 3 kHz tuning range on 7 MHz. You may not get quite as much range with the crystal supplied, but this mod may still be worthwhile. Even more range is possible if you put a small inductance between the crystal and the variable capacitor. A variable capacitor, like you get from an old AM broadcast radio, is suitable. Anything with a maximum capacitance of between 100 and 300 picofarads. One thing to mention though, is the frequency offset will be a little bit different at the higher and lower end of the tuning range. That's something you can measure with a commercially made transceiver with a digital dial. Of course, you can always do the variable capacitor modification with two crystals. That gives you the best of both worlds, both a choice of channel and some frequency agility around the crystal frequency. Another thing you can do when you get tired of fruitlessly calling CQ with no replies is to make the thing into a receiver that covers a few more frequencies. What you see here is a ceramic resonator for 7.160 MHz. When you wire it in series with the tuning capacitor and substitute it for the crystal, you'll be able to tune quite a range on 40 meters. Maybe not so good in North America, but for the rest of the world where you've got SSB activity around 7.1 MHz, you'll be able to tune in and use the thing as a receiver. The circuit is the same as with the VXO, but with the ceramic resonator instead of the crystal. This particular ceramic resonator has three pins. I ignored the center pin, but if you were to earth the center pin, you'll get a slightly different frequency range, covering more lower frequencies. Here's another arrangement, a hybrid comprising a single crystal VXO and a ceramic resonator VXO. The single crystal VXO allows operation in a small section of the CW part of the band, while the ceramic resonator allows reception on SSB frequencies. The switch on the far right selects between the two. Here's a diagram of this hybrid crystal ceramic resonator arrangement. This is the built up unit which looks nice and neat. You'd think it would be a working circuit. What would be simpler than a switch? The answer is that when RF is involved, things can get a bit more complicated. Lines on a circuit diagram are not actually how things work in practice. For instance, when I had this circuit switched to the crystal, which was on 7.15 MHz, it works fine. And there is also a pulling range of around 3 kHz, indicating it was working correctly as a VXO. 
With the ceramic resonator switched in, I couldn't get the tuning range covering the SSB part of the band. Instead, all I found was a signal on 7.025. When I took the crystal out, that signal disappeared. That indicated that there is some interaction. There is a very small amount of capacitance within the switch that was causing the crystal to operate. And that was taking over from the ceramic resonator, which didn't seem to be doing anything. Anyway, that's a diversion. The purpose of this project is to get the ceramic resonator oscillating when the switch is in the ceramic resonator position. To overcome that problem, I moved the switch from this part of the circuit to this part. That did the trick, and I could get the crystal to operate as well as the ceramic resonator on the higher frequency range. But were my problems over? No, they weren't. In the ceramic resonator position, I could hear SSB stations OK, but I also got birdies when I adjusted the tuning control. There is obviously some other internal oscillation that was causing this. That disappeared when I broke this connection, meaning that the crystal was no longer interacting with the ceramic resonator. How did I fix the problem? I changed the switching around. Instead of switching one or the other crystals, I shorted the unwanted crystal. I could do that with the same single pole double throw switch as you can see in the diagram. Here's a close up of the revised switching arrangement. As you can see, the middle pin of the ceramic resonator is not used and is bent back. The crystal is across one set of switch contacts, including the centre, and the ceramic resonator across the other set, also including the centre. This video has shown that even though something might theoretically work in a circuit, things like stray inductances and stray capacitances can cause components not to work as they would on paper. In this case, the fix was fairly simple, just changing the switching arrangements so that the unwanted crystal was shorted out when not in use. This is the Pixie driving an unamplified speaker. Although the ceramic resonator setting was intended primarily for receiving the SSB part of the band, I should mention that it's also possible to use it in transmit mode. A thing that's very important though is the setting of the frequency offset pot. At certain settings of the trim pot, you can have your transmit frequency at several kilohertz above or below the receiving pass band of the station that you're trying to call. And if you vary the frequency with a VXO, you'll get a different offset result. Still, if you wanted to use this rig for SOTA or summits of the air, where most of the activity is around 7.090, you could set the trim pot so it's optimized to transmit with an 800 Hz offset on that frequency. Then, if you tune in the stations on receive and hear them on SSB, they should be able to hear you if you were to call them on CW. We're on receive and we'll just zero beat the pixie. The signal you're hearing now is the local oscillator in the direct conversion receiver. We're receiving on lower sideband, so if you are on 7090, that's where you'd be tuned. And you can hear a note there, so that indicates that the offset is okay for a lower sideband receiver. So if you were to tune in a lower sideband signal on 7090 and give them a call, then they should hear you, provided your signal is strong enough. Now we can get on air and try this out. Well, you're probably half what, well I can't imagine how you're doing it Peter, at least you're 
So to sum up what we've done, we've added a switch so you can switch between a Pixie's crystal and a ceramic resonator. We've also added a tuning capacitor to obtain some frequency agility. In the case of the crystal, that produces about 2 to 3 kHz frequency shift. But in the case of the ceramic resonator, the shift is more like 100 kHz. With that wider shift, it's possible to call SSB stations, and provided you've set up the offset circuitry right, they might even hear you and come back to you. I still don't regard the performance as being very good. We haven't fixed the problems with the compromised product detector, nor with the front end, which is easily overloaded by strong nearby signals. However, what we've done today has made the Pixie much more versatile. If you're on a very limited budget and want something that's both a transceiver and a receiver that covers a fair slice of 40 meters, I would recommend this project. Order a Pixie off eBay, get a ceramic resonator for 7.16 megahertz, such as sold by VK5 EME's mini kit, get a tuning capacitor and build this unit. Not only will you be able to casually tune around, monitoring 40 meter activity, but you might even make some contacts by calling stations on SSB on CW using this transceiver. Stations on mountaintops or otherwise portable would be most likely to hear your signal. The main thing is to get the timing right so you're not competing with other stations and to make sure your frequency offset is set right so that when you do call, your signal appears within the calling station's passband.